have the right to freedom of speech, freedom of worship, from want, from fear. These rights would not exist without a fifth. The right to protect all other freedoms by whatever means necessary. It's my freedom. It's my duty. It is my war. hit our communications, transportation, power grids. We still don't know how extensive the damage is. Your mission just became critical. You know what you need to do. Ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between, I'm Burning Dog Face, and I'd like to welcome you to Let's Play Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell. This game came out in 2002, and it's a third-person stealth action game following the uh, exploits of American NSA operative Sam Fisher as voiced by veteran actor Michael Ironside. It's been a while since I played a proper stealth game, so, uh... I've been looking forward to this for a while, I gotta say. I mean, I had to make a bit few more adjustments than usual due to the age of the game, but I got there in the end, and that's good. Before we begin, though, there are a few things I should mention. Like the fact that I'm going to be doing this long play style. Which is to say that, rather than just a uh, montage of the cool bits, I'm going to be using minimal editing to bring you guys more or less my entire experience with this game from beginning to end. So, uh, look forward to things like menus, loading screens, and, uh, <laughs> repeated conversations if we have to repeat any bits. I should also mention that this is going to be a blind LP. I stepped into the very first area in order to get a reading on the frame rate and audio levels, but other than that, everything we're about to see is going to be new to me. I'm going to play the game for the first time ever, and you guys get to come along for the ride. Here's hoping we all enjoy ourselves. I think that'll about do it. So, uh, without further ado... Let's play Splinter Cell. Yes, it came with this profile called Sam, so I thought I would just leave that one alone and make a testing one just for the, uh, you know, frame rate and audio uh, levels. So let's load Sam, and then since there are no saved games, you have to go to levels and start with this training level. Canceled a trip to Georgia this morning after the suicide bomb assassination of that country's president by separatist rebels from the Abkhazia region. Continued fighting in the Abkhazia and South Ossetia regions has hindered Georgia's hopes of integration into Western institutions. Industry baron Kambain Nikolaj seized power today in a bloodless coup, installing himself in the presidential palace behind a wall of political and military support. The charismatic billionaire plans on holding elections within a matter of days to affirm his seat of power 
and promises a pristine and profitable relationship with America and the West. Bringing high-speed fiber optic connectivity to areas of Eastern Europe that less than a decade past didn't have telephones. The technological leap is due largely to the efforts of rising information industries in the Netherlands, and especially Georgia, where President... The Vice President called his visit to Georgia an honor and called Georgian President Kumbain Nikolads a man with his eyes on the future. CIA Training Farm, Camp Perry, Virginia, August 7th, 2004. I should mention I was not wrong about the year this game came out. The Tom Clancy games are, as I understand it, set in the near future. So when it says 2004, what they mean is two years in the future. Uh, 06, 01 hours. Prove that you are the right man for the job. As Agent Sam Fisher, you have been recruited to spearhead the operational arm of the National Security Agency's Third Echelon Initiative. Before being sent into the field, you must demonstrate that you possess the skills to undertake dangerous and covert solo missions. Sounds about right. Nice suit. Sam Fisher. I can't believe you beat me here. I like to be early. Hello, Colonel. You can use my name. The room's safe. Lambert. Good to see you again. I trust NSA orientation is going well? Well enough. Everybody's been real coy about what exactly I'm allowed to know. It's the nature of the agency. We don't let any one person know everything which means we've all got to work together. Even though I'll be out there alone. You'll be transmitting to us in more ways than you can imagine, and we'll be online through your earpiece and OPSEC. And that's how we're handling training. Yep. Sorry to make you run the course. I know you've been taking care of yourself. I haven't been in the field in years. Sure. But tradecraft is something you don't forget. It's like riding a bike. Or wearing high heels. <laughs> be careful, Fisher. Everything we say is being monitored. You know how nervous the brass is about exercising the fifth freedom. I'll be good. Be better than good. Third Echelon is a brand new initiative. The role aggressive intelligence operations will play in NSA's future will depend largely on your performance. I'll see you on the far side of the course. All right, Sam. Let's get started. Can you hear me clearly? Hi there. Good. That means the implanted speaker is working correctly. Now. The technicians here want to calibrate your equipment. Can you turn to the red emergency light on the wall to your left? Great. Now the one on your right. It's like the thing from the beginning of Halo, except it's an entire room instead of a machine in front of me. Okay, same thing for pitch. Look for another light up in the rafters on the ceiling. Excellent. Now look for one on the ground in front of you. All right, Fisher, we'll get through this as quickly as possible. We'll start simple. Climb up onto that ledge, that pool. All right, now I can move. I couldn't do that before. I should mention right off the bat that I am not playing this uh, natively. The game does not run at 1080p natively, so I am using the creatively named Splinter Cell widescreen fix by 13AG, which is to say the word 13 written out, not the number 13. I'm also using a program called Anti-Micro to help me with my controller, because uh, this game, well, predates the Xbox 360, so of course it predates standardized uh, controller use on P uh, PC. I should also probably clarify that, uh... Well, on PC, they make your speed controlled by the mouse wheel. You scroll up, you go faster than when you're walking, you scroll up more, you start running. You scroll down, you start uh, sneaking. Which basically means I have to have buttons that move, uh, turn my speed up and down. So I put them on uh, the left and right bumpers on this Xbox One controller. Okay, enough of this. Press jump shift at the base of a ledge to grab onto it. Spacebar to continue. I mapped spacebar to the start button, since I couldn't find a way to uh, 
Let me get the menu button. I am going to have to be using a combination of uh, mouse and keyboard and controller for this one. You might have noticed there was no controller support on the menus. This is button do. Interact is Y. To repeat pop-up training uh, training tips, interact spacebar with one of these objects. Spacebar to continue. Press jump shift at the base of a ledge to grab onto it. So what I thought there was that I had to press it a second time when I when I was at the base of the ledge, but if you press A, he again he just kicks off the wall. What they're actually asking me to do, as I found out while fucking around, is just jump here and then hold it. Yeah, there we go. I don't hold. I actually don't hold the button. I just don't do anything. I hold on, and he catches it on his way down. Yeah. We'll let you do your thing here. You're looking at your basic assault course. I'll chime back in once you've passed it. I should mention, for the sake of uh, any visually impaired viewers, and I know there's at least one, that uh, Sam Fisher is just an ordinary white dude, middle-aged, uh, average height, I would say, and he's wearing an all-black uh, sneaking outfit, which you can probably picture fairly well. Your default speed is walking. Use the accelerate key, mouse wheel up, to ex increase Sam's speed. Use the decelerate key, mouse wheel down, to decrease Sam's speed. I have a little cheat sheet over here to remind myself of what the actual controls are, don't worry. Oh, I can use Y for that too, nice. Y is the uh, default interaction button here. To use a ladder, simply move onto it or jump onto it to make Sam start climbing. There's an arrow on that side. Ah, yes, I shouldn't climb it from this side, but will it let me? Yes, that's very funny. I've never been able to climb up the back of a ladder in a video game before. Like, well, now what are you going to do, Brainiac? I like the gray and gray camo pants. Right, climbing the ladder. I've demonstrated I know how to climb a ladder. To use a zip line, stand under it and press jump, shift. That's A for me. God damn it, me. Just go back down the ladder. And just grab onto the line. Oh, yes, and the sneaking suit is topped off by Sam's signature. A uh, triple-lensed pair of night vision goggles that he's currently wearing on his forehead, but there is a strap going all the way around the back of his head. Climbing on a vertical pipe or beam is like using a ladder. Nice. What's this do? To crouch, press C. Sam will be slower but quieter while crouched. Uh, oh. When between narrow walls, it may be possible for Sam to do a split jump. To split jump, stand next to wall and press the jump. A. When at the top of the jump, press A a second time and hold. Alright. Oh yeah, yeah, this is one of the uh, moves they kept showing off in all the ads, I remember that. He's just doing the splits, uh, essentially. Not quite. It's not quite horizontal. But he's got his feet braced on either wall in this narrow uh, pathway here. Uh, there we go. Hit A again to let go. So hand over hand under a pipe or beam. Press jump A to grab it. Okay. Speaking of visually impaired, hey, Justin Jones. Shout out. I don't usually do that before I have any comments to speak of, but hey. Yeah, monkey bar is my way across here, except it's the one pipe, so I guess it's not quite accurate. Oh, to decrease visibility and to pass over obstacles on a pipe, press crouch to bring Sam's legs up. Well, yeah. yeah he's slower, but uh, quieter, and I'd w yeah, I would guess less visible, because people have a strange habit of never looking up. This hole in the wall. This is a really rusty looking pipe. I gotta say. Like, I get the wooden walls being all chipped and peeling, but. Really, man, this pipe could give you a fucking tetanus. A to let go. Climbing a fence or lattice is the same as climbing a ladder or pipe. So just walk into it. Oh, that's not what that does, yes. I don't have a center uh, camera button, so I'm just gonna have to rotate it manually.
to put Sam's back to a wall, face the wall and press down on the D-pad, not Q. When Sam reaches a corner, he will peek. Sam can also shoot while peeking. Press Q a second time to exit back to wall. I saw that in the controls and I wondered about that. Ah, oh, good, he does turn around if you do it when you're facing the wall. Actually, do I have to be facing the wall? Yeah, okay, yeah, he can just sidle backwards. Neat. Oh, I see. If I, like, go here... Oh, I can't, like, go here. Fine. Oh, this is awkward. Ah, uh, only left and right work. That's what it is. No, 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 it's not Y this time. It's down. There's a button just for that. They don't use the interact button. Speaker on the corner. Incredibly, there's no one there. <laughs> Up we go. Oh, I like that! There's a different animation in the pipes against a wall. Where he's actually bracing his feet on the wall instead of just climbing the pipe. I seem to remember, by the way, that the lighting was a big deal back in the day, because, uh... This was right around the time we actually figured out how to do dynamic lighting. So that scene in the uh, the meeting room where Lambert's face had like the, the, the Venetian blinds light on it, that was hot shit in 2002. Like really, it really hadn't been that long since we'd figured out how to do colored lighting, which was a real big fucking deal. And, uh, Good job, Fisher. As soon as you can find a way over the gate, we'll move on to covert ops training. If Sam needs to reach a very high ledge, it may be possible for him to jump off a nearby surface. Try standing close to one of the side walls. Press jump, and while in the air, press the jump again. I don't remember what I was... Oh, that's right, Duke Nukem 3D made a big deal out of the fact that it had colored lighting. Nice jump, yeah. Honestly, the animation's... Pretty smooth for being from 20 years ago. Interact open door. Oh, okay. Oh, this door opens, yeah, sure. Guess the course isn't over yet. Loading! I didn't think the loading screens would be big of much of a problem in this game, I have to admit it. You're moving on into covert ops. The objective is to sneak through the area without being detected. Got live bodies in there. Some of the top CIA instructors have kindly volunteered to be your victims. Open the door. The icons above the stealth meter on the right indicate that you have new information in your opsat. The objective bar at the bottom of your HUD keeps you informed of your current objective. Press escape to open your opsat and check new information or get more detailed information on objectives. I'll just use the keyboard for that. Oh, that was the symbol, the crosshairs, sure. Goals, open the door to the next training area. Notes, data, nothing. Sure. I guess, they're, I guess they're just telling me how to check my mission information at the moment. Let's save the game. Can I save the game? Sure, I can just save the game whenever. Whenever. Yay! Oh, shit, Lambert's right there. I didn't even see him with all that shiny reflection. Take this one nice and slow. There's a peek through doors by selecting door peek when pressing the activation button. Oh, oh yes, this thing they just told me. No, that's not it. I was trying to see how you select the other one. Do I hold it? I don't see an option for peeking. Oh! Oh, that's weird. When I. Okay, but how would I... I don't know how to get back to door, an open door once I have door peek, but hey, it looks like I can just let go. Oh, I see. Oh, I see! Oh, I can't seem to close door. Fine. The next door is locked, Sam. You'll need to use your lock picks to get through it. So you're literally just opening the door a crack so you can see if you can see anything from that angle. To equip your lockpicks, press and hold the quick inventory key, which I see is up on the D-pad, and use your mouse to navigate in the menu. Select the lockpicks in the gadgets section. To release a pin, you must press the correct movement key. Uh, I'll just use the stick for movement. 
Once you hear and see the pen begin to move, press the same key repeatedly until it is released. I think I can remember that. Repeat operation until all the pins are released. Can I open this? No. Wait, how, did I, how do I initiate lockpicking? Oh, right, right, right. I have to actually do the thing, yes. Sorry, the first part was... Uh... Right, yes, there they are. Oh, shit, I'm just moving the cursor. That's silly. Lockpicks! That is not what I was meant to do. Oh, I see, so I would mouse over that and hit R in this case. To equip or unequip it, yes. yes. L live demo here, folks. Oh, and then, oh, when I get it! Yeah, use equip, sure, sure. X? Oh, god damn it, I'm being dumb. Select the lockpicks. But then I can't actually start lockpicking, is the problem. Wait. Oh! Fucking A. I hit R like it's a gun. Sure. Oops. Oh, I guess I... Oh, so I just find out whether W, A, S, or D uh, makes it move, and then I just keep mashing that one. Got it. I got there eventually, folks. Pick the lock on the door. Open the door to the next training area. It's dark in there. I guess they're about to tell me about this thing I accidentally did, huh? Or not. This next door is keypad locked. The man guarding the door has the code to open it, but he's been instructed not to cooperate. Convince him otherwise. Approach your opponent quietly from behind and press the interaction key to grab him. If the character has any useful information, the interrogate interaction will appear. Select this interaction to force the character to talk. Huh. Black Ops, huh? After you get the information you need, press fire, right trigger, to knock out and release your opponent. Nice autosave. In fact, I'm going to quick save right there. And let me just say that I appreciate that it assigns quick load to F8 on the opposite side of that little row of keys from F5. Yoink! Hey, buddy. Nice gas mask. Hi there. Hi. You're not going easy on me, are you? Uh, not so tight. That hurts. Sorry about that. What's the door code? Two eight four six nine. It was a pleasure working with you. Likewise. Sorry about this. Ow! Ooh, winds up and punches him in the back of the head and everything. Oh right. Uh. So then I can check notes. Two eight. That's what I missed. I forgot the two. Uh, the first two. Two eight four six nine. Yes, 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 yes. Good! Oh. You know what? I'll just use the fucking mouse. Cause... Access granted! This next door is retinal scanner locked. These things are cheap and near impossible to hack. Fortunately, it's just a matter of getting the right eyes to the scanner. Usually an officer. The gentleman ahead is registered for the scanner. Convince him to open the door for you. To force an opponent to cooperate, sneak up from behind and grab him as before. While still holding the opponent, grab him, uh, drag him to the object that you want to use. Uh, what? Drag him to the object that you want them to use and press the interaction key to force them to use it. Inconsistent pronouns confuse me there. Any 
need to borrow you for a moment. It doesn't let me talk to this guy, unfortunately. I did really like that, though. The sort of acknowledgement, yeah, this guy's also on our side. Uh, oh. Oh, okay, I walk backwards in the direction I'm indicating, dragging the guy with me. Sure, 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 sure. Oh, use retinal scanner. Known Colonel, grant access. Uncle Sam says thank you. Can I read this? No. It's fucking dark over here. This is a dead end. This is embarrassing. Um, yes, the timer has gone, I think. Just gonna see if I get to the end of the tutorial. Let's work on stealth. Your gun should always be a last resort. Visibility is your best weapon. You've got a network of photocells on your outfit connected to a visibility meter on your offset. If the meter's at four, you lit up like a Dutch broth. At zero, you're a ghost's shadow. The stealth meter in the bottom right-hand corner indicates how well lit you are. When the tab is at the right side of the meter, you are well lit. When the tab is at the left side of the meter, you are practically invisible. You will need to shoot the lights to get past this camera. Select the pistol from your quick inventory. That was not there last time. Press the equip key. Fire. Press the equip key. Which one is... Did I make E? I think that was, uh, X. Oop. I saw you on the monitor, Sam. Let's try that again. Yep. I'm not moving. I'm still... Oh! Oh, it just loaded my autosave! <laughs> Alright, let me check the, uh, the, the recording. Okay, I guess the, uh, the episode really is, uh, finished. And uh, I'm kind of embarrassed we didn't get through the, uh, the training level, but hey, I guess there's a lot to know to be a splinter cell. So. I'm Burning Dog Face, and uh, with the premiere over, I'll see you on the next episode of Let's Play Splinter Cell, when Sam finishes his training and we get to properly cracking heads. My incredible psychic powers tell me it's going to have something to do with the nation of Georgia. <laughs> uh. Later.